Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Today we're continuing with our series, Anatomy of a Mix. Today we're gonna explain how we mix the song Tennessee T by Cumberland Road, country rock band. I co-wrote, produced, played a bunch of things on it, so I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's dig in. So down here in red are all our drums. So on, on every one of my individual channels, I usually have a Pro-Q2 and an SSL channel strip. So I'm, I'm treating this like this is my console, except in my, in my mind, in the old days, it would've been great to have an SSL console and then have like a Massenburg EQ for the real technical digging in stuff. So the Pro-Q takes care of that and the shelving, and then the SSL takes care of the console things. So there's a kick. Then there's a kick sample. And this is the CLA samples through, uh, through the trigger. Now, what I do is, if you'll notice, the kick, the kick sample, the second one, which is a uh, Billy Decker, his samples, great engineer out of Nashville, those are all routed to the kick aux sub. Now, if you notice down here, kick sample ambient, that's routed to the drum ambient bus, right? So here's drum ambient bus. So why are they routed to two different places? Well, on the ambient samples, there's more of a room sound and I want it to be stereo. On the straight up kick samples, I want it to be mono. So with a summing mixer, the advantage you have is you have these stereo mono buttons. In my case, my kick, my bass, my snare, and my lead vocals are dead center mono. True analog mono, hardwired, not mathematical mono like in a DAW. Once you use a summing mixer and you figure out what's gonna be in mono, then all of a sudden, the, the height and the middle open up for you. And that's kind of why I got into it when I did and I've stuck with it. Here I have the ambient part of the, of the CLA sample, which was all the, the overheads and all the different room mics and whatever effects he put on it. Then it's a very similar thing with the snare. I have a snare, I have, I have snare samples, CLA samples, CLA ambient samples, some Billy Decker samples. And then the rest of it straight up goes down the line, nothing fancy until we get to the overheads. I added this because it's really simple to add on and it adds a little something that was really good. It sort of tucks the snare and gives you something nice for the cymbals. And you'll notice on all of these, you'll see auto align. And this is a phase alignment tool. So you can, without having to manually move everything at a sample level to line them up, that will take care of it for you. It'll move them forward or back based on you send a signal to it from a source. So my overhead mics determine where everything else goes. And then from there, they all follow different paths. And it's phase aligned and it takes like a couple of minutes. Then we had percussion, we had hi-hats, we had tambourine, stick tambourine. We had the clap. Um, same thing on the clap, I did something different. I added some overdrive that I blended down a little bit just to give it some character. And then we had a loop. So the loop has multiple layers of things. So why don't I explain the loop because it starts out the song. Here's the sound of the loop in the verse. So I have three channels where I duplicated the loop. So let's hear the initial loop. Cool, so let's hear the initial loop if I shut off most of this stuff. So I just decided on this guy to roll off some of the low end. This guy rolled off a little more, but I boosted at a certain point and just boosted some smack up in there. And the FabFilter Pro MB is a multiband compressor. So sometimes the kick felt a little heavy for me, so I had that. Then I have as an option later on in the song in the breakdown, I think. I popped this in so all the low end would be taken out and it'd be a little more funky without the kick for some part of the song. Now, I have the secondary track here and we'll take the automation off so I can raise the level. Let's hear this. So what's different about this one is I dipped out a bunch of things 
And then I processed it with this, which is cool. Let's hear it without it and with it. So that's our distortion generator. And then I have the uh, arouser, which is the distressor software. So here's those two out, and then I'll put them both on. If I take out the Pro Q, it sounds like the other loop. So here it goes. So if we put the two of those together. Without. So I have the option of having that sort of lo-fi trashy one in there if I want, and I can ride them up and down. Then the third one is just high end, the hi-hat more and maybe the snare. So I, I filtered out some, I compressed a little to bring up this quiet stuff. Then I put this overdrive on to, to make it have a little bite. And then I put this Brower, uh, this pan man on, sorry, another sound toys. So let's hear this one. It was just something different to make it sound not so staticky. So, so let's hear all three together and see what they sound like. Second half of the verse, you'll notice some stuff is grayed out. So the drums come in in the chorus, then they come in in the second half of the second verse. So the ambient samples and these bigger drum samples on the kick and the snare didn't really work there. So here's a little bit of the first half of the second verse into the second half with the drums. So they all have to work together. So that was the point of taking out some of those samples. 